Last time on the Skip and Josh podcast. Josh, people have made millions of dollars because they sued McDonald's or coffee comp- uh, like restaurants because coffee was too hot. But actually, you know? it was too hot in that instance. <laughs> so you agree with that one? <laughs> there's a very good documentary about that, and, and the coffee was too hot. And ever since then, all those coffee places have to make sure that their coffee is not that hot. You're listening to the Skip and Josh podcast with Skip Sherman and Josh Obadia. I'm Josh in Toronto. And I'm Skip in Montreal. In today's episode, useless subscriptions, sign stealing, and cutting cable. But first, a correction. Okay, Skip, so I need to start off this week by uh, correcting myself from last week. You know how we love corrections on this show. We need to be accurate. We do love corrections, but also, you know, I'm a stickler for grammar, and I made a huge grammar mistake last time, so if I'm going to complain about other people's grammar, I should correct my own. Grammar police! Right, what was it? You texted me after the episode, right? I don't think I told you about this, though. So I listened to it, you know, I listened to our episodes, and when I heard this part, I had to play it back like four, five, six times, because I couldn't believe what I said, and I wrote it down. (laughs) So I'm going to... Read to you first what I actually said on the show, and then I'll do it again in English. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So what I said was, when I was talking about how when I left the house, I don't take things with me anymore. Right. I said, I want to take as little items with me as possible, which is not grammatically correct. No. No. What I should have said is, I want to take as few items as possible with me. Right, gotcha. Okay, I'm glad. You, you feel better about yourself now? That you I, I feel it. much better, thank you. It's been weighing on you the it, whole week, right? It really has, actually. I know, I know it has. I, I, know how you oper- I know how you operate. It's definitely weighing on you. So anyway, now that that's out of the way, mm-hmm. the big news this week, for me, is that I've been talking about doing this for a long time, but I finally cancelled all my sports channels. Oh my god. Just when the sports are about to start back up? You start, you start canceling. Well, I mean, two things. First of all, I should have done this months ago. But second of all, sports are not close to starting up again. I know NASCAR has started and golf has started and, and UFC has started. But I don't watch those sports. I don't think we're even close to hockey or baseball or basketball restarting, to be honest. And, and even if they do, I can always I can always get my sports package back. It's really not a big deal. But what I've discovered, not having the sports channels... This is similar to now that I don't take my phone with me when I leave the house. It's like I feel so much more relaxed not having the sports channels because I always felt like sort of obligated to watch the sports channels thinking something earth shattering might happen and I might miss it. Um, but now that I don't have the channels and I don't watch them at all, it's like it's like I'm, I, I feel like a new man. So if I would have texted you last night and said, put on TSN 2 because there's a classic Expos game, you would not have been able to watch. I would not have been able to watch. But as you pointed out to me before we started recording, it was a game that I'd already seen last week. So why does no, no, it no, matter? I know. I know. But I mean, they're, that's, that's interesting because now I'm, I can't, well, it's, it's interesting. I can't wait to see if I'm going to text you to say, hey, is this on or is, check this out or whatever. Well, you can still text wow. me and I can still look at the guide and see what's on, but I can't yeah, watch it. That's super weird. Well, good luck with that. I'm like, I can't wait to see how this experiment rolls out for the next little while. I have And to... like you said, you know, the, the, the sports are creating a lot of hype. And by the way, I guess you're not watching the German Bundesliga. No, I haven't been watching that. Sorry. Cause... I was watching that this morning. Uh, how are you doing in your German Bundesliga pool? <laughs> I'm not, but I was watching it this morning. It's just, it is weird to watch with no fans. It's kind of bizarre. So, but the, the the North American sports are they they're they're making this noise that they're going to restart. Like the NBA came out this week and said, you know, it seems like they've settled on Disney World as like the what they're calling the campus, you know, and and the NHL they haven't really announced much more. Although they said training camps, they said dates for training camps to start and everything. So it seems like like they're they are getting closer to w- starting. Although the NHL, and you can correct me, they haven't um, actually named the what they're calling the bubble cities, right? They, they don't know yet. Although everyone seems to think it's Las Vegas is one of them. I mean, they just gave that list of 10 cities and they didn't say anything else. Uh-huh. But uh, I have my own opinions on that. Right. And then, I mean, then you have Major League Baseball, which is like, 
I don't even know if it's they're going to play, you know. I but think Major League Baseball is out. the biggest joke because they keep going back and forth every day. Let's play 100 games. No, let's play 50 games. No, let's right. play 75 games. No, let's play 60 games. Like, you know, I don't even care anymore. Like, and don't then, don't play yeah. at all. I don't even care. And they're saying like, oh, Rob Manfred could come out this week and sort of unilaterally declare that the season's going to be 50 something games. I was like, well, why didn't he just do that already? Uh, you know, and and the, the weirdest thing is about baseball is, is like they're so stupid. Like, honestly, they just can't get out of their own way. Like the other sports have much more hurdles and much more challenges to overcome than baseball. You know, first of all, the baseball season hadn't started yet. So they had all this time to figure out what they were going to do. The season hadn't started yet. So they're starting from a clean slate. The, 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 the games are played outdoors compared to compared to. um um, like hockey and basketball and not only that for m- the majority of the game the players are six feet apart <laughs> you know other than the batter and the catcher like or a play at a, or a play at a base the players are six feet apart you know and it's actually is the most safe and it's outdoors of all the sports you know so like they and they still can't figure out what they're going to do. They still can't figure it out and it's all about the money, which is in with everything going on in the world to be arguing about the money. Like fans are pissed. They're not pissed. Fans are just apathetic like me. Like I don't care if baseball comes back and plays 50 games. I'm not going to watch anyways. Honestly, I'm not. So, here's the thing. Um you know if you'd asked me this 25 years ago, I would have had a completely different answer. Oh, well, of course. Baseball but, was my whole life back then. Oh, no, but I haven't even told you the question yet. Oh, okay. It's not just baseball. Like, sports, as you know, has been my life for yeah. since I was since I knew what sports were. Same with you. Right. You know, the first yeah. thing I do in the morning, even before I had a, a smartphone, you know, I'd go check out the newspaper and look at the sports section. I've that, been doing that every year since I'm 10 years old. Yeah, I mean... Every day of my life since I'm 10 years old, I check, I was checking the sports section until I wasn't getting the newspaper anymore. Right. So, and I, you know, it, and if you had said to me, I don't know, 25, 30 years ago, whatever, you know, there's not going to be any sports for a few months at all. Yeah. I would have been like, what are you talking about? How, how, how am I going to live without it? <laughs> but then, but then, then the first nail in the coffin was the 1994 baseball season when they just didn't finish the season. And I was thinking about this. You know, we talk about it like so matter-of-factly, like, yeah, they just didn't finish the season. But try telling that to someone who wasn't born yet in 1994, like your kids, for example. I mean, your daughter probably wouldn't care. Yeah, no, but my son, who's a sports fan, understands that because in his lifetime, there was an NHL season where they played no games and they did not have a season for one complete season. So he's a bad example because he was around for that. But but try telling this like, you know, 50 oh, years kids. fifty years from yeah, oh. now, someone who's oh. not born yet today, that we missed a whole season. Well, we missed the end of the 1994 baseball season because of a strike. And we missed an entire hockey season because of a strike. And then we missed, you know, all these sports because of this coronavirus, whatever. Yeah. Those people who aren't born yet are going to be like, what do you mean you missed a whole season? Like, how do you do that? They, they wouldn't understand. Yeah. I don't think they would comprehend. Right. But then... I think this, this coronavirus and, and not having sports and me surviving through it with no problem at all, I think this could be the final nail in the coffin where I don't even care if they don't ever come back again. Wow. So uh, maybe we're going to have to completely rebrand this rebrand this podcast, Josh. Maybe we're not going to do, do sports anymore. Well, it's, it's just called the Skip and Josh podcast. We can talk about yeah. whatever we want. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but uh, now listen, I'm not saying... You know, sports will come back one day, and I will watch them again. I'm not saying I'm never going to watch again, but I'm ne- I'm never going to be as um, enthralled, for lack of a better word, or invested in it. I'm never going to be as invested in it as I was in the past. Mm-hmm. Well, I uh, think I think there's a lot of people like you, actually, Josh, um, that are just the break is proving to themselves that they don't miss it as much as they think they would. You know. Like I would rather, they they would. I would rather play sports, participate, you know, in some beer league, hockey league, or whatever, yeah, than watch. Yeah, I get that. Um, and then listen, so between 1994, the first nail, and this, the last nail, there's a lot of other things that have happened in sports that have, 
you know, slowly turned me off of it. You know, the yeah. the big contracts and all these players, like you said a minute ago, arguing over how to how to divide billions of dollars. Like, do I need to yeah. hear that? No. No. Wow. Well, now, Josh, big moment in your life, canceling your sports channels, admitting to the world that you're not invested in sports. This is big. Yeah, well, I mean... First of all, I'm saving 25 bucks a month, so really everyone should do it (laughs) because it adds up at at the end of the year. Um, Now, one of the unintended consequences of me not having my sports channels is there was some big news last week that I didn't hear about until two days after it happened. (laughs) Now, this is a perfect example, I think, of a story that to me was pretty big news that you're not going to care about at all. Okay. So it happened eight days ago. I heard about it six days ago. But uh, Chris Cuthbert is leaving TSN and going to Sportsnet. I read about it on Twitter, actually. Um, There was a lot of... There was a lot of reaction on Twitter and Cuthbert, you know, posted about it and everything. But, like, do you think this is big news? I mean, these guys move around all the time, Josh. Well, no. First of all, Chris Cuthbert hasn't moved since... 2005 I know I, think? I know but I'm saying like in general these guys I'm saying like sports announcers they they jump networks they move around they go who where they're going to get paid you know and or where they think it's going to be a better opportunity for them so it's not like earth shattering and and like we've said so many times do you even care I mean I know you like Chris Cuthbert and he's a great announcer and everything Well he's but... not he's not just a great announcer he is the best hockey announcer in this country therefore the best hockey announcer in the world and so that's why i think this is a huge deal and that may be true but in the end of the at the end of the day you're gonna watch the game on whatever channel it's on regardless of who the announcer is oh i'm gonna yes i don't care what channel it's on but i think it's a big deal because first of all it 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 creates a hole for tsn how are they going to replace a guy like him but also It's like it has a ripple effect on all the current hockey play-by-play announcers at Sportsnet because up until a week ago, Jim Hewkson was the number one guy, would always do the Stanley Cup final. Now I'm assuming Chris Cuthbert is expecting to do the Stanley Cup final. Where does that leave Jim Hewkson, you know? And he's not a bad announcer either, in my opinion. No, he's very good. Um, So I just, the the fact that I didn't hear about this until two days after it happened was, you know, there you go. I'm I'm asleep at the wheel. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's funny well you're not on social media so you you're sometimes you're not like getting the instant reactions you know like I, I i read about stuff and you're right i don't care about it that much like i didn't that you're right if an example of things that you think are great uh, you think are really important and i really just say or say oh well like that's one of them well by the way so as i was reading up on on the chris cutford thing i, I came across this story from 2006 Ooh. um I don't know if you remember, I I didn't remember this at all, when um, Al Michaels left Monday Night Football to go to NBC. I don't remember. I mean, I know he did. Right. I don't remember. So in order for this to happen, there was like a trade between ABC and NBC. Oh, my God. And I didn't even know about this till till just a few days ago. So who did they trade him for? Well, it wasn't a person. That's the thing. Oh, okay. So NBC got Al Michaels and ESPN slash ABC got these four things. They ESPN got the rights to broadcast live Friday coverage of the Ryder Cup for like okay. the next four years or something. Yeah. They got the rights to uh, Olympics highlights because NBC has the rights to the Olympics. Right. So now they're able to show the highlights. Okay. Yeah. And they also got... Expanded highlights from Notre Dame football, the Kentucky Derby, and the Preakness up until 2011. That's super funny. <laughs> so, That's super funny. So, I mean, well, I didn't even realize these things happened, but it's just very funny. Well, I guess maybe he broke his contract, so the, it's like compensation, but it seems kind of weird, no? I don't know if he broke his contract. I don't know all the details, but anyway, I just thought that that was funny. And, oh, there was one. Sorry, I, I, I forgot the most important part. They also got historic cartoon character Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. What the hell? 
<laughs> I've never even heard of that, and I don't even know what it is. Well, so here, Walt Disney produced 26 Oswald cartoons in 1927, but Universal distributed the series and owned the rights to the character, prompting Disney to develop Mickey Mouse. Mm. Anyway, so ABC wanted Oswald back, and that was part of the deal. Oh, my God. Okay, whatever. Anyway, just thought it was funny. Is it, isn't Al Michaels back with ABC now? <laughs> like, <I don't... laughs> well, doesn't he do... Hold on. Doesn't he do Sunday Night Football with Chris Collinsworth? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so he's oh, still so, so he's still uh, with NBC. Well, or is that... Yeah. Yeah, you're right. He's still with NBC. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Because, yeah. Like I said, I, I don't keep track like i don't know what network i'm watching it's just look and see what where the game where can i watch this game and that's where i go you know tv so anyway now that i'm not watching sports can i tell you all the stuff i did watch this week let's hear it tv and movies now yeah i mean not really many movies just tv yeah, unless you okay, count documentaries as a movie i don't know it is yeah documentaries are a movie there's a category in the academy awards for documentaries okay so um I finished watching The Last Dance. Yeah, how did you like that? It was fine. I mean, I like I said, I, I'd heard everything about it uh, before I even started watching it. So there were really no earth-shattering moments for me because I'd heard about them already. Um, I mean, there's one funny story. Do you want to know or do you want to watch it yourself? No, tell me. I'm not going to watch it. So... <laughs> I don't know if it's funny, but you remember the game where Michael Jordan had the flu? Yeah. 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 Oh, no. I heard the story that supposedly he got poisoned pizza. Right. Which... But from his own team, no? Not from his own team. From the delivery guy. Oh, from the delivery guy. Well, yeah, because when they delivered the pizza to the hotel room, apparently there were four guys that came to deliver the pizza. Like four young delivery guys, right? Because they knew it was going to Michael Jordan and they wanted to meet him and whatever. Right. Okay. Which I don't understand because when you call in the order, it's obviously not Michael Jordan calling. It's some dude who's a buddy of his, right? Yeah. And you're not saying this is for Michael Jordan when you call in the order. So how does the delivery guy even know who's getting the pizza? Maybe they're just taking a chance and they're trying to go to the hotel where the, they knew the Bulls are staying. Anyway, I don't know if I believe the story that the, the food was poisoned. No, I don't believe it either. It is interesting that, you know, they had enough pizza for like four guys Jordan was the only one of the four that ate it because one of the guys said, you know, I don't trust this. I'm not eating it. And really? Of course, yeah. Um, because there were four, like, punks outside the door delivering it. And he was skeptical. He's like, I'm not eating this. You do what those you want. Jazz, those jazz fans, eh? Yeah. So Jordan was the only one that ate it. And, of course, he was the only one that got sick. So it's possible. But whatever. It's possible. Okay. What else are you watching? So I watched. There's um, on Netflix. You probably know this. There are at least four different Seinfeld specials, like stand-up specials. Yeah. yeah, I saw. Yeah. So there's one from just this year. There's one from 2017, one from 2002, one from 1998. And they're all about an hour long. Right. I watched them all. Are they good? Well, I mean, the, the one from 98 is, you know, all the jokes because it's really all the jokes that he used throughout the, the show. show, Seinfeld. Yeah. So they're not new jokes. The, the 2020 uh, episode was all new stuff and it was it was not bad i mean i don't know it's it's hard to say because you know you see seinfeld and automatically you're already laughing even before he opens his mouth because you know him and you know that he's funny if you yeah. saw if he was just some random dude up on stage that you'd never heard of before doing the yeah. exact same jokes i don't know if you would find it as funny because you don't know the guy well i heard that because you know he's come here to montreal i'm sure he's come to toronto too like to play like concert or whatever you call it, right? Like a big stand stand up, but like in a big big venue. Mm-hmm. And and I remember at the time, like the first time he came, and 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 people were like, I'm, I I forget who it was that I talked to. I ta- I had a bunch of friends that went to it, and then I asked them how was it. They're like, eh, it was okay. Like they were no one was that impressed, you know. And listen, I think that being a stand up comedian. Remember how I yeah. said the easiest job on the planet is um, a manager in the American League. Yeah. The hardest job on the planet, I think, is being a stand-up comedian. <laughs> I really do okay. think that's the hardest I, thing. I do think it, I agree. I do think it's difficult. I, I mean, like, difficult. actors have their lines written for them. Yeah. So they don't have to worry about that. Plus, actors are usually doing it 
you know, on camera. So you don't get the instant reaction from the crowd. Yeah. No, and, and stand-up comedians are putting themselves right out there, right? They're like, you tell a joke and no one laughs. It's like... You're dying on stage in front of people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's Okay, it's, what else are you watching? I, I can't wait to hear what else you're watching. Well, I started watching on your recommendation and someone else's recommendation. I started watching Mindhunter. Right, okay, sure. Which I'm only, I'm only two episodes in, but I can't yeah. tell if it's, if it's a drama or a comedy. Well, it's a drama, but yeah, okay, I get you. No, because there's some times where, like, the main character, whose name I don't even know. Yeah. Like, in the first episode, for example, where he meets his girlfriend. Obviously, it's not his girlfriend yet. Yeah. Some of the things that he says and does, it's like, what, are you being trying to be funny or are you trying to be no, an idiot? I don't get it. Trying to, he, he's just, he's very weird. Like, he's he's almost like... He he always rubs people the wrong way. You're gonna see that throughout the the episodes. I've anyway, noticed, I've noticed that. Yeah, stick with it. Like season one, I think is just good, and season two is much better and really good. Like, I mean, season, I, after season two, I was like, "Where's season three? And I don't think there's gonna be a season three. Anyway, I'll stay with it. It's only I'm only two episodes in. It's just I don't. It's just a little odd because there's some funny lines in there, and I'm like, are they yeah. trying to be funny or? Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, it yeah, just? I hear you. Um. And that's pretty much all I watched. What did you watch? Um, I started watching a new show last night um, on uh, Amazon Prime called Treadstone. Hold on. That's from yeah, Born, it's Al- like, Born uh, Ultimatum. Ex- yeah, it's an expansion of like the Born universe, basically. Like a new show, but in the same, you know, premises. So... You know, it, I'm only two episodes in, so I, I don't know exactly what's going on, and it's actually quite confusing, but also still quite good. <laughs> so um, it, it seems pretty good. So I, I'm gonna stick with it for sure. I'm sorry, I missed which, which, which streaming service is that from? Amazon. Because with with you, I need to ask because you have them all. Well, we have a few, yeah. <laughs> and that's the only streaming thing I watched this week. I mean, Top Chef is the show that I um, I'm still heavily invested in there's one more episode left so if you want to watch the finale josh thursday night well i haven't network. seen any of the other episodes how can i go well, straight you don't even to the get finale food network guarantee you you don't even get food network right likely i don't have it i wouldn't know what channel it is on my guide 690 no 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 i'm something. not with video Trump. oh you're on bell you're on bell sorry yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah, it's coming down to the the last three, so it's, it's it should be good. And then I, then I'm gonna have actually no more network shows to to watch. By the way, I sent you a link this week. Uh, Zoe's extraordinary playlist was renewed for season two. I saw that. Thank you for sending it. I'm surprised a little bit because the show is going to be completely different. I guess. Yeah, next season. for sure it will. For sure it will. For sure it will. But but like I don't know when they're gonna make the show. No. Uh, like uh, I don't know. Soon, soon, soon! Uh, like a lot of these channels are gonna run out of content. You know, well, you know there's, there's nothing new being made. They're gonna end up doing the same thing that all the sports leagues are doing. They're going to have all the people that are required to shoot a show quarantined yeah. for like you know a month or two or whatever it is, yeah. and you're gonna they're all gonna be tested every day, and they're all gonna come into the studio and do the work they need to do, and right. and maybe and they'll they'll it. be able to pump out an entire season in two months or something. I don't know how long it takes. But it's not that much. But it's not that much different than what usually happens when you're filming a movie or TV show. Like, don't you feel like, like. So, so and so is filming a movie, you know, and then they they have to go to a city that they're that they don't live in sometimes, you know, to film this movie. And they know that on their schedule, they're going to be there for six to eight weeks and they live in a hotel. In this case, they're probably going to live, you know, like it's it's within the same kind of workflow, I guess, you know. (laughs) Yeah. So it might not be any different to them. And you have the same people working on it, you know, every day. Right. So you can just say, okay, these are the. 50 people or 100 people that are working on the show and that's that yeah yeah anyways we'll see we'll see what else i'll be watching uh, this week but i'll i'll keep you abreast of what's happening on uh, tsn and sportsnet in case <laughs> thank case you, you i appreciate know, that in case you want to know that's super funny so that's it that's all you got i got a few more things i have some listener mail josh all right let's do that then <laughs> mailbag got a few texts from uh, mark from philadelphia yeah a couple of things so I, I i had this thought early in the week and it's weird because i was thinking about it and then like as if he read my mind he sent me a link um to 
about the same topic. So like if there's no baseball, right? If there's no baseball, right? I was thinking like, is Bobby Bonilla the highest paid player in baseball if they don't play any games? <laughs> well, yeah, he's still getting paid, right? Right. But then Mark sent me a link as if, like, again, as if he read my mind. And uh, apparently Prince Fielder is still owed like 20 something million this year by the Texas Rangers. So he's going to collect his 24 or 5 million this year, regardless of games were played or not because he apparently he retired under some kind of circumstances where it was due to an injury with his neck and then they they came to an agreement about how to buy out his contract so they owe him this 24 25 million this year no matter what happens so he will be the highest paid player probably this year like even if even if even like mike trout right with his super huge contract he's not going to make that right like prince fielder will be the highest paid player this year super weird no that's ridiculous And then the other thing that Mark sent me, uh, I think he just sent it to me this morning, actually. Uh, So uh, the guy who was supposedly, his name is Steve Dalkowski. He's supposedly the inspiration for the movie Bull Durham, which was my number one baseball movie when we did our top five baseball movies. Um, He passed away this week and it was from COVID. But, I mean, he was an, an older person. I don't know how old he was. I mean, he, he played in the minor leagues in the 50s and the 60s. So, so apparently the, he... the character that Kevin he, Costner played was based on him? No, no, not Kevin Costner. Uh, oh, Nuke Lelouch. Nuke Lelouch, yeah. Okay. God, the sucker teed off in there like he knew I was going to throw a fastball. He did know. Wow. I told him. Uh, so apparently he was renowned in the minor leagues for, like, being able to throw... Like uh, Cal Ripken Sr., you know, Cal Ripken Jr.'s father, um, who was a coach for his whole life and player, you know, he's been in the Orioles organization his whole life, said like in the minors, this guy, he said, every, they didn't have a radar gun, but people said he was throwing 110 miles per hour. But the thing is, he never played in the majors because like Nuke Lelouch, he was super wild. <laughs> Right. And then the story was that he threw a ball from dead center field to home plate and it went over the catcher and over the press box. Like, you know, well, hold on. Didn't you do that in our softball league 25 years ago? Exactly what Mark wrote to me. This is exactly what Mark wrote to me. He goes, he goes, change press box for backstop and it's you. (laughs) (laughs) Although I didn't have an arm like that. That was like a once in a lifetime throw from center field by me. That's quite funny. Yeah. So that's the listener mail. Okay, so um, speaking of things that you just heard about before recording this morning. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. We're hot off the presses, right? Well, I just heard about it literally an hour ago. Uh-huh. But apparently there's this report that the New York Yankees were investigated in 2017 for sty- for sign stealing. Oh, really? <laughs> and and it never the, it never went public. Um, right. apparently there, the report exists. In fact, it's, a, it's a sealed letter that the Yankees have the letter. I don't know if they've mm-hmm. opened it. Um, yeah. and there's, there are fans or a group of people suing. I don't know if they're suing major league baseball or the Yankees. They want this sealed letter opened because they think that it affected their fantasy baseball league. Well, okay. Well, first of all, <laughs> anybody who's anybody who's making legal action about their fantasy baseball league needs to check themselves because that's just, you know, that's just that's they're in another reality, you know. But really, it's all those Yankee fans that were saying that uh, Aaron Judge should have won the MVP and that uh, Altuve has Aaron Judge's MVP award and all this. Like, well, maybe not, right? (laughs) Well, it wasn't the Yankee fans. It was Yankee players, actually. Yeah, it was Yankee players. You're right, actually. Like, CeCe Sabathia says it said he felt cheated and all this, so... I mean, you said it since day one. There's definitely... the, the, The Astros were not the only team to have some kind of systematic sign stealing. They weren't. It's just they were the ones that got caught. And actually, they were in the World Series, so it was the most high profile. But, like, other teams are doing the same thing. Come on. And, by the way, the Yankees lawyer said there is no justification for public disclosure of the letter. So the fact that they're trying to hide it so badly, it's got to tell me that there's something really bad in that letter. But does he – so, like, they, they, they admit to the existence of the letter? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they're not denying that. Yeah? They're not denying that? They're just – they don't want to open it. 
<laughs> it's like when you you know in the United States now they have this like Freedom of Information Act. Mm-hmm. So like you can any like citizen can like write to the government to the citizens the um, Freedom of Information like Act like there's a department about this and you can ask for like the Kennedy assassination files like and they'll tell you where you can find them. You know like you can ask for all kinds of stuff that's been declassified and and you're allowed to ask for it. So like apparently like the most standard answer that they give when they're not allowed is like. We cannot confirm or deny the existence of such a document, you know? <laughs> very so, funny, very funny. Um, so this other story I saw, I, I thought of you because you remember you told me that in Denmark, in the soccer league, they're putting TV monitors in the stands to create the illusion of fans being there? Yeah. So there are a couple other sports leagues overseas that have been doing some different things. And I don't know if you heard about these. Um, so a soccer team in Korea, they used sex dolls to try to create that same illusion. <laughs> Every, I've heard about that already. Yeah. It didn't go over very well. Let me just no, tell you. I heard about that. Yeah. I Although that. I don't see what the big deal is because the dolls were fully clothed. So I don't know why right. it matters. A doll is a doll. Like putting, if it's fully clothed. I don't, I don't get like it. like putting mannequins. Right? Yeah. So I don't know what the big yeah. deal was, but anyway, but then more recently, a Korean baseball team, um, what they did, I think they're called the Hanwha Eagles, they went in a more family-friendly approach. They used stuffed animals as seat fillers. And actually, I saw a picture of this, and it looks pretty cute. Have you seen any KBO games or at all? I did watch when I had TSN a few weeks ago. Oh, shit. Now you're not going to be able to watch anymore. <laughs> well, so I can't this watch gonna KBO games. This is going to change the games. whole dynamic. This is going to change the whole dynamic of everything. So, um, yeah. So I, way, I did KBO, watch a few KBO games. Yes. Yeah. KBO is actually more like real baseball. Like there's ground balls, there's singles, there's stolen bases, there's moving the runner. There is like, it's, there's, there's contact, a, a, a lot more contact than, and, and instead of just home runs and strikeouts and walks. So I was like, oh, this is kind of like, I remember when baseball was like this, you know? It's interesting that you mentioned that because as I was watching that game that I watched, the one game, it, it, it occurred to me that. You know, I didn't know any of the players. I didn't know any of the teams. I didn't know anything. But I enjoyed watching it. Like, I enjoyed having the baseball game on the television in the background while I was doing laundry or making breakfast or whatever it was. Yeah, It's just nice to have baseball on in the background. So it occurred to me that I don't care if I'm watching Mike Trout or Joe Schmo. I just like the game of baseball. Yeah. You know, last week, I don't know if fans, if our fans want to hear this, if our listeners want to hear this, but like last week after we finished recording, there was an Expos game on TSN, the Expos versus the Phillies. <laughs> so I called you and I was like, hey, turn this on. So you turn it on and they're in like, I don't know, they're in the fifth or sixth inning. And then I figured out like, we figured out pretty quickly, like when it was and what game it was. And I was like, I told you, I was like, I was at this game. I know this game. I know what happens in this game. <laughs> and, and then and then you were like yeah and i'm like yeah will cordero is going to hit hit a double in the bottom of the ninth with the bases loaded and the x's are going to win and then sure enough this is exactly what happened we waited an hour for for the confirmation so my memory sometimes is good on these kind of things oh with those things you're you're sharp as attack yeah it's I, like uh, i have no doubt yeah. yeah all right i got nothing else oh i have one thing go I want to do a shout out. All right. A local store here in uh, Kirkland, Quebec called Java Cap. They are like a coffee store. They, you know, they sell the single serve pods, K-cups and Nespresso and all that stuff. So it's like the second or third time we've ordered coffee from them uh, since the lockdown. They, you can order on their website instead of going to the store. <laughs> It's like the most personal service ever because they're not doing the deliveries. The deliveries in the neighborhood here, they're not using like a delivery company. They're just doing it themselves. So last time I ordered, I order at 10 o'clock in the morning. And at 2 o'clock, my doorbell rings. There's my coffee. (laughs) Same day. That's awesome. Yeah. So just uh, anybody in Montreal looking for a coffee to be delivered to their home, Java Cap. We should see if they want to be a sponsor of our show. I'll ask her next time she delivers. <laughs> so I have a couple other things. Mm-hmm. Or do you want to save them for the end? Uh, good question. Uh, one thing and then I'll, I'll do the others at the end. But so did you hear, do you ever watch ESPN? 
well, only what they show on TSN, like uh, First Take and PTI and those. Right. So do you ever watch Max Kellerman? Oh, man. <laughs> no, but I know what I know what he said. Like it was again, it was all over Twitter and everything. Yeah, he said no one really cares about hockey and he just sort of shrugged it off and continued talking about something else. And so there are a lot of hockey people in the States, never mind here, yeah. who are who are very angry with him. Even other people that work at ESPN are angry with him. Well, he basically said like, oh, hockey isn't even a major sport. It shouldn't even be considered one of the four major sports. But like if you look at the revenue and the sports, obviously you have basketball and football, right? And baseball, which are huge. Right. And then hockey is still the revenue of hockey is still something like four billion. You know, it's like it's a huge number. And then the, the next best thing is like MLS, which is not even in the same stratosphere as the NHL. You know, it's not even close. So like I don't know what he's talking about. You know, if but maybe he thinks there should be only three major sports. I don't know. He's a clown. He's a boxing analyst who got a good gig like being Stephen A. Smith's partner, you know, like that's it. So what when I saw like the list of, of the sports leagues in the States, you know, the top whatever. Yeah. It was annoying because so they've got they've got obviously, like you said, football, basketball, and baseball. But the reason they don't count hockey as one of the top four is because they count NCAA basketball as a different sport and NCAA football as a different sport. So yeah. that means hockey could be at best number six. Yeah. But but NCAA basketball and basketball are still only the same sport, are, you know, and NCAA football and NFL football, they're the same sport. So anyway, whatever. It's all semantics. And then what about golf? Golf is huge. Golf gets the higher ratings than any of well, any of them, you know, except for football. O- only yeah, I think so golf only gets huge numbers when when Tiger plays. Ah, uh, okay, maybe. Well, we're not supposed to talk about golf, right? And golf, so I shouldn't even I shouldn't have even brought that up to be honest. Delete that part. <laughs> Before we sign off, remember you can listen and subscribe to new and archived episodes of the Skip and Josh podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and of course Spotify. If you listen to the show through Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review. We would love to hear from you via email, Skip and Josh Show at gmail.com, via Twitter at Skip and Josh, or by liking and following our Facebook page. As always, you can get all the links to everything I just talked about on our website, skipandjosh.com. We leave you with this. All right. So I do have some something really interesting for you, Josh, to end the show with. I know that you are a huge fan of the Wendy's Baconator. Not true. <laughs> But remember when you worked for the CFL and you were at the Grey Cup or one of the semifinal games, you sent me a picture and you sent me like the email that you got because Wendy's was a corporate sponsor and you had to, you, you guys had to build a giant Baconator in the middle of the field, like not out of real food, but out of like plastic pieces. Yes, I have a photo pieces. of myself with a giant Baconator. It's bigger yeah. than me. Like I could fit inside sent, it. Right. And you sent me the email saying this is the steps. First is the bun, then is the meat, then is the bacon, then is the cheese. Like you had, to, they they had to really, they had to make sure you had the right order, right? Anyway, so I just wanted to tell you that uh, the two of the two huge brands are coming together, Josh, Wendy's and Pringles, <laughs> and they're coming out with the Baconator flavored Pringles. So I, I mean, I don't even know what to say to this because I don't eat bacon, by the way, in case in case you didn't know, and I've I never actually it. eaten a Baconator in my life. Right. Do um, you even eat Pringles? I don't know. So maybe I've, this doesn't matter to you. I've eaten Pringles before many times, but I actually prefer just the plain Pringles. Those are the best ones. Me too. I agree. Plain Pringles are, are number one. Anyways, I just thought I'd mention that because I know you had a connection with the bacon. Okay, thanks. Now, um, I want to ask you, you mentioned earlier how since you were 10 years old, you would read the sports section. Yeah. So I'm assuming you no longer have a subscription to any newspaper. No, I haven't had my subscription to the Gazette in like more than probably 10 years. Okay, but at one time you did because you wanted to get the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And did you ever have a subscription to Sports Illustrated or any other magazine? Oh, yes. Like in, in my life, yes, many times. I had like Sport Magazine, Inside Sport at one time, uh, Sports Illustrated for sure, maybe even like... 
maybe even like the sporting news which just came in like a newspaper style right mm -hmm. yeah all those at one point yeah and now now obviously you subscribe to cable tv and internet and your mobile phone yeah. and all these streaming services right yeah so those are things that are legitimate subscriptions that you need to get on a regular basis some are daily some are weekly some are monthly yeah yeah my question to you is why would you or me or anyone need a subscription to get underwear delivered to them on a regular basis what's the name of the company me undies me undies yeah they like how often fabric, do you need right? to buy new underwear is it thousand times softer than cotton no it might be i don't know i've never touched it i've never felt it but i, I mean like i honestly i buy underwear maybe once a year i'll buy a bunch because i i know what i like and and that's it i don't need to get it every month are you a boxers or a briefs or a combo it's a combo gotcha like they're they're not briefs and they're not no, as no, loose they're as the boxer box briefs yeah 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 it's something in between yeah so anyway uh, no i don't understand that either but like every kind of product is trying to move to like a subscription service right right like because that they're gonna um, make so much more money they're gonna send you stuff every month you can they're gonna they're, 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 it's a constant stream of revenue you know right stuff that you don't need stuff that you don't need all right so maybe for your birthday would you like some me undies i'll buy you them i mean i'll take one pair but i certainly don't want a, <laughs> a subscription to it <laughs> it's super funny one other note to end the show mm -hmm. in case you haven't heard the xfl which we thought folded yeah it did didn't it it, it didn't because now i've heard that it's for sale how do you that's like that's like you close your business and then you're like okay you want to buy it well yeah well you're closed so i'll give you five bucks you no but know, it's, like, it's how much is the building worth you know it's like, legitimately the, for sale I, I i read this so like you you can you can buy it tomorrow if you want but the league don't have doesn't have any assets so like what are you actually buying like there's i guess there's teams but those teams don't even have players under contract so there's like uh it's super weird it's i guess i guess the most valuable thing they do have is the name Right. Well, they have the name and they also have all those uniforms. <laughs> the uniforms. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> which, which, as Jerry Seinfeld pointed out, when you're rooting for a team, you're really just rooting for the uniforms. You are. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Or the helmet. Yeah. yeah, that's true. All right, Josh. So same time next week. Sure. And uh, we'll get an update of how it's going with no sports channels. I got to tell you, it's going great so far. Can't wait to hear what happens next week. <laughs> Talk to you next week. <laughs>